it seems, you know. Um, it's better than talking to a computer. Yes, no screens. I like this one who would rather be right than happy. That's deep, right? Yeah, that is deep. <laughs> one whose favorite reality show is their own. One who believes it's all about them, always has been, always will be. That's This is a great month. <laughs> Uh, this is Chris Schlarb. I'm here with my new friend, uh, Meg Duffy. Um, thanks for coming to Long Beach this nope, morning. No problem. It was a nice drive. And for writing the liner notes to the Guma record. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's Guma. Yeah. I've been saying Guma. I might be wrong, too. Who knows? I mean, you know. We'll ask TJ. It probably doesn't matter. Well, he's not making it easy in the sense that, like, you know, he wants to do this Peter Gabriel thing where, like, every record is just right. Guma or oh, okay. whatever. And he got the name. He used to live in New York. And uh, I guess there are all these, like, trash bins everywhere yeah. that just say Guma on them with a phone number. Is it the brand or something? I have no idea. Yeah. But it seems like it's like some sort of, like, modern mystery. It's cool. So. I like that kind of mystery. Um, yeah. Vague. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. There's, like, no internet presence. Yeah. You know? I love that. Just kind of like, here's a number. Yeah. Um, have you called a number? No. Okay. I is it on the record? I don't even know how to say it properly. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just produced the record. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, I lo so I was saying before we got started, I listened to your your new record this morning. Uh, Thank you. Placeholder. For yeah. Uh, I like the I like. There's so many things I liked about it. Um, one one thing that I well, there's a lot of things that I noticed, but one thing I wanted to mention so just straight off the top was the kind of general lack of hi hat. Yeah. That's my speed, right? Cool. There. I actually <laughs> didn't even notice that, but yeah. like, I gravitate towards the rise symbol. Yeah, and floor tom, floor and like tom. Other, other things holding down the quarter note or yeah. eighth note. I'm a huge pulse. shaker fan. Yeah, their shaker on the record. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I, I almost always, one of the, when I'm like jumping into a record with somebody, <clears throat> I always have to kind of like have a rapport with the drummer. Yeah. Or, I, or whomever I bring in to yeah. play drums just because. Are you a drummer? Frustrated drummer. Okay. You know? <clears throat> I, I know what a good drummer does. Mm -hmm. And I know that I can't do it. Yeah. But you know what I'm same. saying? Yeah, actually same. So so it, it's <laughs> in some ways it's like it, it helps us to like put it into the guitar, right? Because sure. it's kind of like, oh well, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna hold down the whole note, quarter note, half like what sort yeah. of like rhythmic component? Where's the subdivision? Exactly. Yeah. Um but one of the things that I noticed straight away on the record was just a kind of like there's a a, a sort of like um <clears throat> intentionally uncluttered landscape. Yeah. And whenever I hear that, I'm I'm pulled in because of so much music that I hear is uh, so thoughtless. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And or it, overthought. Yeah. That that too, right? Yeah, I've heard so many records that are like so overproduced, and there's like a million things happening. Yeah. And I'm always thinking, what what is the listener? supposed to be listening to For right sure. now right yeah. like all the 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 experiments that you did mm -hmm. or the melody or the lyric or what the it's emotional like, content yeah, yeah. I, I i don't like that kind of like maximalist right. approach toward record making yeah. or music in general you know it's like i i, I want to it's like if i could start with like a, a melody and some harmony or yeah. chord like if the song works there, I know it'll work in any... In any context, yeah. yeah. And it seemed like I, I kind of got that a lot from, from, from your record in a kind of progression from your last album where I felt like you were you're just getting more confident with mm -hmm. your voice. Totally. But, but I like that you didn't smooth out everything in your yeah, voice. No, I hear you. I hear person, <laughs> you know? Because yeah. I struggle with that, too, you know? Like, I only started singing a few years ago. Same. <laughs> out of necessity, yeah. right? It's like I need to be able to, like, totally communicate my own song, yeah. right? I can't be the side man or right. the person in the back forever, mm -hmm. right? You get frustrated. Yeah. Some folks want that. For you sure. Know? 
I I'll probably to, go back someday. You talked to who? Oh, I talked to Jim Keltner the other day. <clears throat> cool. Uh, because he he asked me to you know to take this video off of uh, YouTube that we did for the Baguetta Keltner Watt record. Uh -huh. And, and, I, and it was interesting, it was not an easy conversation for me to have because it was like the only promotional mm. thing we have for the record. But in part, what he kind of said was like, you know, hey, I'm, well, I don't, I don't want to divulge, okay, yeah. you know, everything that we talked about. But w w one of the things that I kind of, <clears throat> that I got from him for the first time was like, oh, he's like made a concerted effort to be a side man. Yeah, for he, sure. He, it was not an accident. No. It was like what he wanted. Yeah. You know? And he's good at it. And he's he's amazing <laughs> at it. Kind of the best. Right. <laughs> but it's interesting because, you know. Him and Glenn. Which one? Um, Glenn K. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> From Wilco? Yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah, but it's interesting because some folks are comfortable going back and forth. Some folks always want to kind of yeah. Their 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 safe space, their comfortable space is kind of like as the supporter. Totally. You know. Yeah, it is safe there. Yeah, <laughs> it, which is a funny thing, right? I, I I like pulling I like pulling people out of their safety zone. That's cool. You know. You're probably a good producer. I like to think so. <laughs> From what I heard, the one record I've heard. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, so I, I'm curious about how you went about making this whole, your new record. Like, I know you did some of it out in, like, Wisconsin. Yeah. Did you produce it? Well, it was co-produced. Bradley Cook was okay. also producing with me. I demoed out every song um, except for one. Uh, what, what are your demo, what's your demo process like? Well, I had never done that before because with the record previous, the demos just became the record. Yeah. I thought I was demoing and then You're Jeremy like, oh. was like, this sounds like a record, right. keep going. Um, which blew my mind, I was like, whoa, what is a record, you know? Um, but a friend of mine had just moved into this house, but then she was away for like two months. And so she was like, you can go and stay there. And so I just demoed it out. And I actually, when I walked in here, I noticed that you had Logic. And I made my last record on Pro Tools with like a little M-Box. And yeah. I upgraded and I got an Apollo, uh, the Duo. And I got a new computer and it had it has Logic on it. I didn't buy it. So there's some glitches. I don't think that it was purchased. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> um, hopefully they don't hear they don't hear me. They're going to come after you. <laughs> They're going to come after me. Um, and... I used the drummer function on Logic oh, right. a lot. Yeah. It's so cool. It's actually surprising. It's kind of like, oh, this is uh, this is kind of fun. It's fun, yeah. It's fun. Um, and for a lot of the demos I used, like, you know, there's like Chad or someone in there, like right. some fake drummer modeled after someone. Is that is, it, is that supposed to be the guy from Red Hot Chili Peppers? I have no idea. Um, or like the like songbird <laughs> drum kit or oh, something, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can make it, that, like that little grid with the little ball and, you know, the X and Y axis. Yeah, it's interesting because they've kind of like decoupled it from seeming like you're messing with a computer. Yeah, it's, it's sort cool. of like it, they've smeared it yeah. a bit, right? It's humanized yeah. in a nice an AI sort of way. Right. Like here's a, here's a kind of like X, Y axis. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's like funkier, groovier, tighter. Yeah. And you're sort of like, oh, shit. I, yeah. I don't know, somewhere around here. I just put it up to, like, slow and simple and less <laughs> quiet. Right, yeah. Um, but there's, you, like, a you cool... no hi-hat. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And for, for a placeholder, that, like, demo, the beat that's on the record is just what was on the demo, but Zach Hansen, who played drums and engineered the whole record... Yeah. Well, not the whole record, but all of the songs we tracked in Wisconsin... He like did exactly what I wanted. Like it just humanized the humanized computer beat. Yeah. And a lot of the, like the other decisions that were made that weren't straight from my demos were Zach's. We just played the song. Yeah. And a couple of them, like the last track on the record, was actually the hardest because the demo was like. I don't know that I had drums on it or something. Might, and might be my favorite tune on the record. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, lo I really, really love your acoustic guitar playing. Thank you. That's such a good compliment to hear because 
I, whenever I'm in the studio, I'm like, I'm not an acoustic guitar player, you know? The, I don't know, man. I just feel like I write almost like all my music it. on acoustic. Cool. And I, I'm sometimes, you know, I'll do a session and I'm, I, I'm like, what? How, how did I get this electric guitar in my hands? Like, I, yeah. it, they really are different instruments. No, they you know? totally are, yeah. But it takes a... Um, you just have a great touch Thank on you. the instrument. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I mean, being in that studio really helped too. There's a lot of nice stuff there. Yeah. The um, record sounds great. Sonically, I liked how it sounded. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Tucker Martin mixed it. Yeah. So he knows what's up. <laughs> he knows what's going on. Yeah. I wasn't. I. That was one of the easiest parts of the record. I was just like, yeah, this is, sounds like what needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what to do there. Um, did you go up there and, and mix it with him? Yeah. Like we did three days. Okay. Yeah, it was crazy. He was also in the middle of moving studios. It was the I think me and Bill Frisell were the last two people to be in there, which yeah. was pretty sick. <laughs> was like, Not I bad can, company. Yeah, I can yeah. hang with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then two songs on the record that weren't Brad-related songs were "What Lovers Do" and "Pacify," and. Um, Pacifies the only song that like the demo was so different. Like, yeah. and Andrew Sarlo produced those two with me. Okay. I mean, he he. It's such a weird word, you know, production because yeah. like I wrote the songs and I had an idea for feel, and then, you know, Brad and Andrew both had their opinions, and sometimes all they needed to do was be, like, instill confidence in me. Right. Which like, at the end of the day, like, is that. A what a producer does, you know? What a great question. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, very difficult thing to answer. Yeah. To quantify. Yeah, right? and I mean, sometimes Brad would just be like, yes, dude, yeah, like, keep going. And like, but to me, that feels like a production. I mean, it feels under the umbrella of a producer. Yeah. And also, just logistically and in a network sense or like an opportunity sense, both Brad and Andrew made the production of the record possible. Right. You know. Did they did they have a, a a voice in like who they wanted to mix the record? Well, I met Tucker through working on William Tyler's record yeah. because Tyler and Brad produced that. And okay. Tucker. That's the or Tucker goes, and goes Brad west. Is that goes what west? Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, when I met Tucker, Brad has this funny habit of playing my music for people without letting me know and then yeah. like talking me up. And then Tucker was like, I love these songs. That's part of what a producer does. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and a good friend, <laughs> yes, you know. Yes, right. Totally. Um, <laughs> And We're starting to answer the question. Right, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so I met Tucker through that way, and it was funny, and I've said this many times in other interviews now, but I keep thinking about it, like how when I when the inception of making this record came to be, become became more of a reality, I was like, okay, I made the last one, like in my room, and you know, in a small way, and now I want to I want to branch out, and I want to work with a producer, maybe, or at least an engineer, or explore my options. And I'm realizing how slow I can be in all of this. You yeah. know, the cycle is like I'm not in the cycle. <laughs> but I th I do think that that's another important element of like having external. You know, I always think of it as a producer provides external pressure. Totally. And time, yeah. they, they time frame. Right? Well, yeah. And I didn't have, but I didn't have that. And I was like, okay, I'll probably like record it. I thought I was going to be recording it maybe like now. Right. Um, or like in the summer of last year, I guess, to now. And I, Brad was like, why don't you come out to Wisconsin? We'll do two days. And it was supposed to just be a trial. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what to expect. You know, like, is Justin going to be there? That was like freaking me out. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, we're like friends to a degree. He just but put vocoder on everything. Yeah. He's like, I got it. The idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to do a vocoder song one day, but yeah. No, he was not there. He didn't have anything to do with the record, and other than you know, we used the studio. But the f two days, we ended up me, Brad, and Zach, and Chris Messino was there too, who's the like studio manager and engineers all the Bon Iver stuff with okay. Zach, and he's a genius and such a good guy too. Yeah. Um, good crew out there. 
And in those two days, we tracked seven basic tracks, like, so easily. Right. And I was like, uh, this is the record. Like, right. we've started the record. Yeah. And I thought we were going to do, like, one or two songs, but we just kept going. Did, did you feel like maybe, in part, because your expectation was so low? Probably. Or none. Kind of I like, didn't have any. Yeah. yeah. Right. The, Which the, I... The, the, you know, you're kind of in the right place with the right people. Totally. And then the next thing you know, you're like, well, this was the gift. It was, yeah. yeah. And then there was two of the songs on the record that, like, we did track. They are pacifying what lovers do. That, and I had been sending my de songs to Andrew because Andrew and I had met, and I sent him some demos, and he was like, these are great songs. Like, I can't wait to see what you do. Yeah. And then those two, he was like, Meg, like, we got to just, just trust me. Like, we got to try these differently. Like, I, have a, I hear these differently. Mm -hmm. And I trust his opinion, to, you know, to a degree where I was like, okay like if you're so passionate about that let's do it yeah. you know and so brad plays bass actually which was funny putting the two of them together it was i learned a lot from that experience yeah i mean now they're friends and they're working together but, I, I love it when that happens but at first i was like oh fuck like i'm putting two producers in the same space and asking one to be quiet yeah that's and hard it was hard yeah. i mean like but brad <laughs> was like i'm coming yeah and i was like i don't know if that's a good idea and but I really want you to and he was like I think it'll be chill and it's just funny to like watch watch that sort of play out yeah. and I was definitely like oh this could go really bad but then I was like everybody's so they get it yeah you know I went, I, sometimes I wonder if <laughs> this is gonna sound like uh, cor corny but sometimes I do wonder if like people's signs play into that shit mm. you know like certain personality totally. types like you could have two sort of like producer type you know What's folks your sign? cancer okay cool and i never pay any attention to that stuff until like at one point my wife was like oh like almost all of your friends are like the same sign what They're, are they i don't know <laughs> but it, well i think some of them are taurus okay and then uh virgos wow uh like I said, I couldn't even tell you all the, right. the astrological s signs. I, I don't know anything about it. It's better that way. I only know what my wife tells me. Right. And she told me. <laughs> and then <clears throat> kind of what happened is I think a lot of folks, like their birthdays were like in and around. The same Like time. September. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like Leo this Virgo. cat. Yeah, Leo Virgo. And I was just kind of like. Oh, that's an interesting coincidence. And then this shit happened like 10 times. Yeah. And I was like, these are like a lot of my favorite folks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and people that I just have had great relationships with for like a decade. Totally. You know, yeah. that like I never have problems yeah. with. And then, then there are other folks that are sort of like, oh man, like things are, can be kind of like testy, but yeah. we still have great chemistry. You know what totally. I mean? And I like that kind of stuff too, you know? For sure, yeah. <clears throat> I always think like uh, of those great you know, records where you have like a, like kind of like a headstrong producer and like headstrong like band member or mm -hmm. two and they kind of fight yeah. and then this incredible shit comes out of it yeah. because it's not what either of them would have done on their own. For sure, And yeah. I really, sure. I really love it when that happens. Yeah. Because you, know? you can hear, totally. you can hear the fight. Yeah. You know, you can uh -huh. hear people's different personalities come through and I sort of feel like yeah. that's the thing to do if you if you're trying, if you're you're in it and you're doing it all the time that's the thing to do like right. don't do the same thing yeah you know yeah I'm definitely I, for the next record I make I would love to be challenged in a way that makes me pissed yeah you know yeah I mean it's not really that hard for me because I think <laughs> I I do have a pretty clear I like to say like I don't know I'm open to anything but then when I when I was in the studio it's like no I, I want I know what I want this to sound well, like that, that, I'm glad you said that because I noticed over you know I listened to the last couple of records that you made and I was like they have they have like a sound that is seems true to you yeah um, there's a softness yeah. to it there's a kind of um, uh, kind of a melodic complexity and some really interesting like little harmonic chordal turnarounds that, oh. that are really pleasing to my ear. Thanks for noticing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's craft, right? It's yeah. song craft. It's sort of like, well, I could do this for sure. or I could spend a little more time on it and make yeah. this better. Totally, yeah. Um, or the spirit was nice to me that day. Totally, yeah. <laughs> that that happens. I feel like I can't even take credit for some songs sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't, 
I don't remember consciously writing that song. There, there is a mysterious quality that is part of what makes music or art so um, addictive. Yeah. I think where you kind of feel like, man, I just, I just Someone pulled this straight out. Me. Yeah. Where did this come it's from? It's so cool. Yeah. I mean. It's really weird, and every time I write a song, I'm like, that was the last one. Right. Like, they're done with me now. Yeah. And even if that were true, I think that would be okay, because, like, I got to get some, you know? Yeah. But it is really strange when that happens. I, I feel like if you keep putting yourself in in certain situations, um, whether it's like playing with like certain musicians who maybe like mm -hmm. scare you or freak you out mm -hmm. or that you admire, or if it's just a deadline yeah. and you don't have much time and you're forced <clears throat> to do something that you may otherwise have said, oh, I'd rather take a few months. Yeah. And you're just like, no, no, you gotta do this in a week. Mm -hmm. I feel like those are the times where something is given back to you. Right. Right, where it's kind of like, man, I only got a few days. Yeah. And then you're galvanized to act. Right, You know. yeah. And I feel like not enough people do that. Um, like wait till the last minute. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Or they just they give up. Yeah. You know. For I, sure. I, I see that happen all the time. You know where, I mean, part an, another part of you know the whole producing thing is kind of like convincing people to take their work seriously. Yeah. You know. Totally. Yeah. To be an advocate. Well, it's it. hard sometimes to do that to take yourself seriously. I think. Well, in a world that could care less. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, and in a world where you can create any image of yourself that you want, yeah, and that will be the image. Yeah, that's interesting. So, like, how do you know what your self is? And, like, even if, like, I, you know, I like to think that I have a pretty clear understanding of myself that's not true <laughs> not always that's not true but it definitely in terms of a like a musical relationship like brad definitely made me take myself seriously and it's not about be being validated by a man like that's not <laughs> where my complex lies yeah no no <laughs> um, it's an artistic but yeah validation. i mean because i think i some somewhere, some time in my past, someone was like, "You should just play the guitar, not sing." Oh, and I've been told that. Oh, it's so fucked. Like, if I ever have kids, I'm gonna be like, "You can be anything you want to be. Like, yeah. you're the best." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, work hard, but of you're course. the best. Yeah. Um, I've got three kids. Yeah. And do you tell them that they're so cool? I I just I try to celebrate their genius yeah. their intuition yeah but totally. i don't bullshit them yeah that's good if uh back in the day i remember one time my 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 daughter came to me with like a uh, painting some yeah. artwork she did she's like dad look what i did for you and i was like you did you spent two minutes on this yeah the dang that's harsh but now she's probably like what the, the 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 thing is okay. I was like okay. That's I appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, it, it was harsh. I am. A, yeah. kind of a, I can be a harsh parent. I but think that's good. In part because like, it's in, what's important to me in the world is um, sincerity. Totally. Yeah. And, har and hard work. For sure. And a kind of like dedication to yeah. to craft. I cannot stand bullshit. Yeah. And kids will, if kids are really good at getting away with some bullshit I because guess. they're like, oh Crazy. yeah, like, but I love you. It's like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know you love me. Of but, course. Yeah. But, but love is more than just saying something. Totally. Love yeah. is doing. Love is right. an act, right? Mm -hmm. It it, ha it can't be, you cannot pacify me mm -mm. by telling me this. Yeah. And now I just, I, I'm supposed to say that this thing that like, you spent great two job. minutes on. Yeah. Right? It's like, do you want to be a painter? Right. It's going to take more than two minutes of yeah. work to be a painter. Right. D does that make sense? It does, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this honestly. This is the harsh reality, you know, that I'm kind of throwing on, a, sure. on a, like a 10-year-old. I mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah, that's like, 
I mean, parenting just seems like, you know, the utmost form of manipulation, but like in the best way, because yeah. you're like, I want the world to be better. Yeah, that that's an interesting thing. I mean, I, I always feel like I, I, I love being a parent because I, I take it seriously. Yeah. Um, and I also, I like learning things from my kids sure. too. You know, it's not, it's not just about kind of like, let me tell you kids are so how, smart. how to do something, yeah. you know, it's like at a certain point, you know, like my, my son who's 17 now, uh, you know, wow, a few years ago, crazy. he started like listening to like, uh, like, uh, uh, this, like, I don't know. I can't even remember the names of these groups. It's some like modern, like large ensemble kind of rap group or okay. whatever. Yeah. Uh, they just did a record at like Abbey Road or whatever. Oh, cool. Uh, um, anyway, he's listening to this. He's like, Dad, check this out. And I was like, All right. And he's like, What do you think? Yeah. And I was like, Well, you know, yeah. it's cool. I mean, I get why you like it. Yeah. Um, and then I like, I played him some like, you know, Tribe Called Quest or something. Right. And he's like, What? What the hell? And I was like, Now, I'm not saying that like just because it was from like when I was young, it's right. better. But here's what I like about yeah. it. Yeah. And so now he listens to both. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, for sure. And and now even though I I can't remember the name of the group, Whatever. I do know who they are. Like mm -hmm. if you know if somebody was like Brockhampton. Okay. That's what, that's what, that's, I've never that's listened what. to that. <clears throat> but it's 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 got to be kind of a two way street. For sure. You know I mean? Yeah. So. I mean, like, but the harsh reality thing. I don't think that. I would have such a like, I'm gonna just keep getting better and one day I'll be good complex because like when that person who said like, maybe you shouldn't sing, mm -hmm. said that to me, like literally I talk about in therapy, it's so annoying. Like I'm 28 years old, I should, and I'm making music professionally. Yeah. yeah. I should. You think I would learn that by now? Uh, but but you, it's do you stuck. feel like you, you you exercise those demons every time you sing a song? Fuck yeah! Right? I'm like, check it out. NPR put my song on there, and then I'm singing. Hell yeah! Bitch! Like. Right. Yeah. Where are you at? <laughs> yeah. You're there, like. There is a, I mean. That shit is below the surface all the time. Yeah, but it's fuel, and like, I don't know that I would like feel that way about writing songs, and and be able to recognize that there's always room for improvement too, mm -hmm. and like. Like you said, you're like, yeah, I'm glad you didn't smooth some stuff over. It's like, there's parts of my record I'm so pitchy. I have problems with pitch. Like, I have to try. Singing's hard. Singing's really hard. Yeah. Some people are so good at it. I know. It's so crazy. I know. I'm deeply jealous. <laughs> I know. I was just saying to, I was recording some new songs with my friend Emily Sprague yesterday, and we were talking about a mutual friend of ours whose voice is just, like, she can sing anything, and it just sounds so good. Yeah. Her name's Hannah Reed, and yeah. she sings on the record. She sings on Placeholder. And... Um, I was like, it's just not fair. And I was like, I hope in my next life I come back with like a sick voice because I've been working so hard in this <laughs> one. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting pretty good at singing. And then like, we'll do a take. And I'm like, fuck, like there's that. And I'm okay with it. And I know like you're saying it's human and, but the, you know, the multitude perspective is that like I do keep getting better because I keep trying yeah I quit smoking that's good um and also I'm okay with how it is Joni still smokes I think Joni's superhuman no shit yeah she's also like like a like a baritone now I know, you know? that's wild <laughs> I mean like she's incredible. old she's yeah. like do you see that photo of her and David Hockney of course yeah I look so at her like every day so cute <laughs> I can't holding even. hands oh. oh my god it's so it's gonna be like me and Kevin when we're oh. older like going to see are like hold my hand. I, I, one of the things I loved about seeing that image, obviously, one was just that she's out and about, yeah, which makes me Doing her like thing. extraordinarily happy, especially after her That's health good, he yeah. health problems. The other is just that, like, you know, I think she's an incredible painter, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, like, she's like a true polymath. Like, who, yeah. who could? I, what does that word mean? Somebody who is just like extraordinarily talented at a number of different In all things. Areas, you know? yeah. yeah. I mean, like, okay, imagine, okay, here's, right, I, I feel like I talk about Joni on every time I talk with somebody. That's cool. But imagine being her peer as a lyricist. Okay, that's just one thing. Then imagine Tough. being her peer as a guitarist. So that's tough. another. Yeah. As a vocalist, as a producer. I know. And then as a painter. Yeah. But like, okay, damn. The spirits like her. 
she she's done something. She's made a concerted effort. You know, I yeah. I, I think about one of the things I think about with her a lot because I think about her all the time. Aww. Is she, she? There may be for me no greater inspiration. Yeah, that's cool. Just as far as like a dedication to for sure. craft. Yeah. And. A, a, a general disregard of whatever the world totally says yeah. or cares about or demands, yeah, right? That's for sure. <clears throat> and I, I always loved that she could never be dominated by a man. No, never. I really, really love that. I know. She she's made every effort in her life to just say no. Fuck you. Yeah, I'm good. I don't need you. Yeah. I'm more than you can handle. I know. Right? She's literally. Yeah. And she she's had she's had great men come and go in her life. Totally. You know, like I don't think anybody. You, I don't think you could find anybody that could say anything bad about Graham Nash. Right. Like, it, he he stands in a distant, cold shadow of her brilliance. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jackson <laughs> Brown. I know. Right. 